Got some more upgrades. This actually was probably one of the cheaper upgrades I've ever got. All of this stuff right here cost me about $160. So I'd say I probably have about $260 or close to $300 in this entire upgrade altogether. I remember when a one terabyte hard drive would have run you about $300. In fact, I actually remember when a 500 gig drive like this would have run you about almost 200. Wait. Maybe not. The Seagate that I bought that was a 500 gig drive, that was a $200 drive. Uh, but I'd have to think that $200, even during the hard drive shortage, would have been criminal to be asking for that for 500 gig hard drive. $200. That doesn't seem realistic. For something like this, probably maybe about 170. Not quite 200, but close to it. Anyway, so about that. This is going to be replacing the Seagate hub, this Nexstar CX, or TX. The CX is actually the three and a half inch enclosure. It's pretty much the same thing, except it's USB 2.0 and doesn't support eSATA. That's okay, I don't really care. Um, so we've got all of that. And the last little piece is this. 750 gigabyte WD black drive, and that is going to be replacing the 500 gig WD blue drive that's in here. That's my files drive. So that one's actually going to be the interesting one because I'm going to have to change some drive letters and reboot the system and hope that it's going to work. I might have to do some other magic in order to get that working, but it should be fine. So the current, I should show you my current hard drive setup. I'll plug in my other drive here. So I want all the drives showing up. Eventually, there we go. Okay. So there you can see the setup. I still have not done anything with the Windows drive right here. Um, this is pretty much empty now. This is the drive that I'm going to be replacing, but again, as you can see, I haven't really done anything with that, but I'm not really looking for the space, I'm looking for the performance increase, so. Then we've got my backup drive, which is the one that I just plugged in, the 2 terabyte Toshiba. These drives are all pretty much not even halfway full yet, except for this one. So, this is the only one really that I have that's not full. Well, that's halfway full. And, um, this Seagate, I probably should give an update about. The Seagate's been running, like, absolutely flawlessly. I haven't noticed any problems with it at all. Of course, I don't trust it, so I've got some backup stuff on this drive here. I'm gonna unplug that. Um, I still don't trust it, so I've got, like, the important stuff still backed up, but... I mean, as long as it continues to work, I'll be happy. Uh, but then again, let's get all these other upgrades unpackaged so I can get all this stuff set up and working.
Oops. Source disk geometry. All right, yep, I can do it that way. Perfect. That is excellent. Operation to do all of that. Intelligent sector copy. Finish that off. Overwrite, because I don't care. And that should be okay. It's going to create a couple of snapshots and do all that, but it should still be fine. Yep, there it is. Seven power on counts. Really? Oh well. Anything to ensure the drive actually works. But there you go. It's now going to check the file system. So, okay, yeah, it's probably going to take forever. Um, but uh, that's pretty much all that she wrote for this. I really don't need to record any of the rest of this. Uh, so, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. Oh, yeah. Speaking of comments, I'm going to address, I think, one of the biggest comments that I'm probably going to get from people. You should get an SSD. Well, there are a couple of reasons why I didn't get an SSD. For starters, this 160 gigabyte drive that's in here right now, while it's a hard drive, and it's a Hitachi hard drive at that, so can I do better? Yes. But it's a 7200 RPM drive, and it gives me all of the performance that I need. Most of my data accessing goes on outside of that anyway. The only thing that it would really improve with an SSD is maybe pr program launching time, program responsiveness, and even at that program responsiveness, not that much, and boot time. And considering I don't really shut my computer down that often, doesn't really matter to me. So I just don't need all of that stuff. But anyway, I mean, you get the idea with that. The other problem is that they're just not cost-effective for my needs right now. I don't need to have the performance of an SSD. The hard drive, like I said, works perfectly fine. So I can't really justify spending, goodness only knows how much, probably about as much as a one terabyte hard drive costs, on a 128 gigabyte SSD. Because I'm going to need that. I have too much stuff on the other drive right now that it won't fit on a 60 gig drive. It just, that won't happen. But, I mean, there you go. So that's why I didn't get an SSD. So please do not ask me why I didn't get an SSD. Any other comments? Leave them down below. This is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then. I guess I lied to you guys because I said that I was going to be done with the video, but obviously that didn't happen. As you can see, that's torn a little bit apart. Because I'm not sure where the issue is, but the transfer speeds that I'm getting to this drive are absolutely abysmal. And I'm sorry, but this is going to happen whether it wants to do it or not. So, I don't think I've got a dead drive either, because I've checked a couple of different things with it. In fact, I actually ran an H.2 test on it, and it passes. So it's not a dead drive. There's nothing wrong with the drive. So I don't know if it's the enclosure, or if it's the severely congested USB bus that this thing has got, but... I'll tell you what. 3 megabytes per second is not going to happen. Whether it wants me to believe that or not, I am not going to put up with that. So we're going to do things the old-fashioned way. As you can see, I took the drive out of its caddy. I put it in the compact, and we are going to take the compact, and we're going to run Clonezilla on the compact. We're going to do it this way, because at least this way, it will actually, hopefully, freaking work. And it'll be fast because it won't have a congested USB bus to deal with. So let me get all this. Well, I can plug this in and then I can get the Clonezilla disk and the power plug set up and then we can deal with all of that. All right, we are booting now after quite a bit of fighting with Windows 8 and its inability to shut down properly. That was a really stupid feature, I'm sorry, but 
The fast shutdown feature in Windows 8 just should not have actually even existed on any kind of a system that isn't a tablet, because it's not that necessary. Of course, obviously that's open to interpretation. So, oh, there we go. It's actually decided it's going to put its brightness up to the proper level now. As you can tell, I'm not very happy with this machine, because just simply powering it off was not enough. I had to wait until Windows failed to start, and then I had to power it off. What a waste of my time. And before you say that I probably should have just got another machine and tried it that way, well, I could have done that, or I could have just used the one that actually works. This, this one's set up to do what I want. Expert mode. Okay. Source disk is the 500 gig drive. The target disk is the 750 gig drive. Skip checking and repairing file system. All the data will be lost in SDB. 750 portable, perfect. I don't care about any of that. Yes, I want to continue. It's going to ask me again. Yes, I want to continue. Do you want to clone the boot litter? Uh, sure, it doesn't, this doesn't really matter since it's not going to be booting, but... There we go. So let's see what this does. So that's device number one. I'm going to be changing that back to something else anyway. Reclaiming that space. I'll do it in Windows, though, so... In fact, I'm going to get my T500 up here and I'm going to do it with that, because that all should be a whole lot easier. This looks like it's going to take a while. This is what's probably going to take a while. That looks to me like a much better speed. Don't go down, keep at it. Right. Don't know why it's going down, it should be staying at 2.3 gigabytes per minute. Because that's the speed that it should be transla transferring at. So. Anyway, whatever. I'll just let this go, because... It still seems awfully slow, like that speed there. It's probably just this stupid USB enclosure that's a hunk of garbage, needs to be... thrown out a window or beat with a baseball bat, because obviously it's not working as well as it's supposed to. Oh well. Glad once this whole process is finally done. But I highly don't believe that it is going to take three hours to do this. With this Asus it's almost like the old days, except it's slightly different because this is a different HDMI. display panel. And, uh, make this nice I'm still amazed that this PC display board. panel actually survived being TV dropped here, on the floor. System. And I forgot how well this actually sounded. Um, obviously the new machine, like, this pales in comparison to that, but it, it has a different, like, sound, like, you know how every set of speaker has a, every set of speakers has a different sound signature to it. This one sounds a lot more bassy and a lot more deep, and I've kind of forgotten what that sounded like over the last little while, because usually I just have the sound off, because I'm using it in a setting where there are hundreds of people, well, okay, I shouldn't say that, there are about 30 people in the same room. So it's not ideal to have sound going, so I usually just turn the sound off. I forgot how much different this sounded when compared to the other machine. I still prefer the speakers on the other one because they get louder, and they also are on the sides, so they sound just that much... They're bigger speakers, so they have, like... They make more sound kind of thing. I don't know really how to describe it, but... I mean, they just sound better, as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, this is a 15-inch laptop, a lot of people would disagree with me and say that the 15-inch speakers, well, the, lap the, fi the speakers that are on the 15-inch laptop sound better. I don't think so, because it's a lot of people don't seem to know what uh, a year of innovation, in fact, actually, I think it's, no, it's more than a year, but one product generation of innovation changes. 
But anyway, I'm gonna have to watch this, like, stuff. I'm gonna have to do something with my time while I wait for this to finish, because... I don't know. It's probably going to take about an hour and a half. There is absolutely no chance that it is going to take three hours. But still, I might as well get something done. Or watch some of these videos. Or do something while I'm waiting for this to happen, so... One thing that I should probably do while I'm, I've got this here is test this thing's ability to play the six final render video. I actually also want to show you guys something here. Take a look at the difference between the video that came straight from YouTube and the uncompressed version. Check out the file size differences here. This is 53 megabytes. This is almost 14 times that size. Let's see what this does. I really hate how it just decides it's going to... I'm going to not start up Maximize. Let's try it and see what happens. Right, it's chopping up. It's actually not that bad, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, no, it can't do that at all. Alright. So that's enough of a test for that. So obviously it can't play that file. Um, but of course, it can, all, it can do the, uh, the normal file here. Because it's like, absolutely tiny in comparison. And look at that. Look at how well that's going. Shut up. Right, it's done. Okay. So now that that's set up, I'm going to have to do a, I'm going to put this all back together and we will finish up with this process hopefully all right let's start this up oh forgot a couple of things oh, there we go drive is now on Start window 7, let's see how much stuff is busted. Put our mouse back here. Yeah, that was really an interesting experience using that other T500 as a main computer for the first time in a while. That was weird. I'll tell you that, tell you that much. Anyway, let me log in and we will uh, take a look and see what's broken. The answer is that we were half broken. Of course, I've gone ahead and fixed it because that was actually a really difficult process that I had to go through. Way more difficult than it needed to be, but anyway. So the desktop and all that was fine, but the libraries were broken. And I don't quite understand why that would be the case because it is still the E drive. Oh yeah, speaking of that, I still have to go in and make sure that the drive is the right size. I'm going to re-image that, of course. That's going to be on my list of things that needs to be done. The drive supports SATA 6 gig, but this computer is SATA 3 gig only, so... None of that really matters. Extend volume. There we go. So... There we go. Now we're about half filled. That's how you take care of that. And the other thing that I'd also I wonder why I wanted to get rid of this 100 megabyte stupid system reserve partition. I might do that later, but right now it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Can shrink it 16 megabytes.
Anyway, so there you have it. That's actually pretty much all that I need to show you. All the upgrades have now been completed. So the next thing that I need to do is, well, deal with this mess. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And, uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.